What's up, everybody? And I hope you're enjoying your Saturday morning so far. This is NYG Jeffy T85 here, and I'm bringing you some news and notes around the New York Mets after their home opener that they played yesterday at City Field during Friday afternoon against their division rivals, the Miami Marlins. And the New York Mets, they had themselves a happy day. Happy day, happy day at City Field. The Mets went out there and they had themselves a very, very impressive performance with the bats and on the mound for an unlikely source. Starting with the bats, at least, the New York Mets have been asking guys like Pete Alonzo, Francisco Lindor, Jeff McNeil, Brandon Nimmo, and Starling Marte to really make their impact for this baseball team all at the same time. And up and down this lineup, you got contributions from everybody up and down this lineup, which is the best thing you could see for this baseball team. The Mets ended up collecting six hits. They had 12 walks in this game. They walked 12 times. They did strike out 11 times, which could be a lot better. But at the same time, this team in runners in scoring position did a hell of a lot better than what they could have done before. They had a couple of stolen bases as well. They went 2 for 15 with runners in scoring position, so actually I lied. It wasn't as good as it was before. But the team really got the job done with the home run ball. That's what really helped this team out the most, is they got it done by launching the ball over the fence. And they had three home runs in yesterday's game. Starling Marte homered back in the sixth inning. Francisco Lindor homered back in the eighth, as well as Pete Alonso. Lindor's was a two-run homer of variety. You got Brandon Nimmo, who got on base at least four times he walked. Nimmo had five at-bats. He went 0 for 1 in those at-bats, but he scored two runs and he got and he walked four times for the New York Mets. So he didn't record any hits, but he at least got on base for the team. Starling Marte went 1 for 4 with two runs. He had that home run and he also walked and struck out once. <laughs> Francisco Lindor had that two-run homer back in the eighth inning. He also went 1 for 3 with one run scored, obviously the one that he got the home run. And he, had, and he walked two times. Pete Alonso had two for five with one run, two, two RBIs. He also had a double earlier on in the game. And he had that home run in the eighth inning. That's his fourth home run already this season. And he struck out once. Jeff McNeil went 0 for 3 with one run. And he had two walks in the game and two strikeouts. Mark Canna, he had an infield single. Or he walked and he drove in a run on a bases loaded walk. He also had one run scored and 0 for 2 in the game, but he struck out twice. Daniel Vogelback even had a run where he had infield single and he drove in some and he drove in a run all the way back in the third inning where he drove in Francisco and or he drove in Starling Marte. So and even Tomas Nito. Tomas Nito also had a sacrifice double play. Where he'd sacrifice he had hit into a double play, but he was able to drive in a run. And Eduardo Escobar grounding to a fielder's choice, but it was able to drive in another run too. Back in the seventh inning. And Nito also did that in the seventh inning too. But also, Tyler McGill had himself a pretty nice game. Gave the, they gave the team innings. He had went six innings where he gave up three hits, no earned runs. He had two walks in the game. And he struck out three. And he got himself out of trouble multiple times. But McGill gave this team six innings without giving up a run. And he gave this team good pitching relief. And then you have the rest of the team. The only guy that really struggled in that bullpen was Dennis Santana. Who gave up three earned runs overall. Including a three-run home run to Cooper. Brian Cooper. In the seventh, in the eighth inning, uh, off of off of Santana, but Brooks Raley 
and Danny Reyes were able to close out the game later on and provide the New York Mets with a big victory in their home opener. Trumpets were playing. Everything was good. The New York Mets were able to right the ship for one day and get the big victory over their division rivals, the Miami Marlins, who they pretty much handled so far at the beginning of the season. And they pretty much were hitting right off of the starting pitcher of the Miami Marlins, Edward Cabrera, who they pretty much had a, ver a field day against overall, where he gave up two earned runs, but they really did a good job also attacking the bullpen of the Marlins. <sighs> Mets had four stolen bases in this game. Well, they had three stolen bases in the game, or two stolen bases in the game. Lindor and Nimmo both had a stolen base. They got caught in a double play two times. McNeil, Lindor, Alonzo, and then Lindor, McNeil, Alonzo. Mix it up just that like that. Mets, like I mentioned, struck out 11 times, walked 12 times in the game. Three home runs, Marte, Lindor, Alonzo, all went deep in this game. So that's a very positive sign that three of your home run hitters were able to go deep in this baseball game for you. You had a good pitching, you had a good overall pitching pitch game by Tyler McGill, and now you're going to get Mr. Forkball himself, Kodai Senga, going on the mound for the New York Mets this Saturday afternoon in their second game at home. Mets have been able to handle business against the lowly Marlins. Marlins have a good, they have some young talent on their baseball team, but for the most part, the New York Mets have done a good job against this uh, Miami Marlins team. Just have to continue to go in out there and handle your business against a team that you're just better than. And I like the fact that up and down the lineup, they got contributions from every single player. Nimmo didn't get a hit, but he got on base four out of five times by walking. And that allowed this baseball team to just be able to generate more runs. Starling Marte got a home run in the game. Alonzo and, and Lindor, they went deep. McNeil didn't get really, didn't get a hit. He's sort of cooled off. He's been off to a rough start so far this season. But I'm sure McNeil will be able to get it going. Canna, same thing. He's been off to a rough start. Vogelback was at least able to get an RBI. Same with Nito. I don't like the fact that nobody on this team right now, other than Starling Marte, is hitting consistently above 250. He's the only guy that's hitting 276 on the lineup. Everybody else is, is hitting like 220, 230, 240. But it's the beginning of the season, so these guys still have plenty of time to really start heating it up and getting it going with the bats. But either way, Tyler McGill did his job on the mound. They got key hits when they needed to. And the Mets now get come up with a big victory in their home opener against the Miami Marlins. And they'll get ready for their second of three games this afternoon against the Marlins with Kodai Senga on the mound. Hit that like button if you haven't already. Give a sub to NYG Jeffy T85. More news updates and chatter surrounding the New York Mets. Turn on the bell for notifications of the next video. We're short dropping on the channel surrounding the New York Mets. And you guys let me know in the comment section what you thought about yesterday's New York Mets victory over the Miami Marlins in their home opener at City Field in Queens, New York. Thank you very much, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Take it easy, and let's go New York Mets. As always, all you got to do is you got to believe in those boys from Queens.